Uh, okay, hello, welcome for my Murphy VR day. Whatever, I'm lagging again, but I'm going. I guess not um, hearable. Got to find. And I got no repairing today. Um, yeah, yeah. Go to the last one because it was last night I watched a preview pairing. But anyway, but we have pairing in which, uh, yeah, for most we can just do a thing where, you know, depending on the mood, but for most part, we have default. Anyway, the first W you think the ticking clock written by Jim Bernstein. The main story of the point is that a big clock in the middle of the town is being torn down because it's not working too well. It's called Becky. Uh, and Melissa, you know, they're like, I believe that clock was like built by her like great grandmother or something, and she, you know, she might have cried a bit, and but she had the whole thing get tear down. Go, they, she kind of, they need to band together to fix the clock, go, fuck it can stay up. Um, with the help of Clyde and his robot thing from a Clockwork Origin, and of course with the turn of Joe McHale and Victor Verlinker, who are trying to stop all this. So basically the sequel to Clockwork Origin. Meanwhile, Doofenshmirtz <laughs> want to um, you know, you know, be more helpful and actually try to do good to transition into when he's going to become good with the record time stuff later on. Go ahead and build the, uh, uh, gumminator or something like that where you get rid of guy want gum and stuff like that. With the help of Perry, you know, with Perry, you know, instructed by my Ram and Carl to go over and help do in short with that. I'm gonna talk about first, um, I don't know, like, they had the entirety to stay out, uh, the code over had an extended cameo, um, so yeah, I have a cold cup plot, which, to be fair, much like Agent Yoji, on its own, I found pretty entertaining, um, there were some good jokes, Margaret and Carl get some good lines, and, uh, you know, and, you know, and it could go much better to stay out, because, again, he, instead of, which means he's living out in his, like, shed in the backyard or something, instead of in their house, which never established, like, at all. And I think that worked better <laughs> than what they were doing before, but, um, <laughs> yeah. And he wants to actually try to do good, like, on his own, and probably inspired by Duke Day Out. And he and Doug, indeed, get to do something, instead of it being handed to him, like, a mad up code. He actually does end up accomplishing something, not the gum thing, but he ended up helping out the clock thing. Even if he doesn't quite, even if he doesn't quite understand what he did, he did indeed help out at least in a conscious way. So it is a lot better with that episode. It's just that it's so cool after that one, and it feels like we should have just gotten that episode right the first time. And plus the mistake of him not being the best at doing good, getting old. They didn't Agent Doof, they didn't Alkafile, and it's like, you know, you're making him like not good at anything, and I feel like you should develop him further and make him better, let's not make him kind of goofy, you know, instead of, you know, what we're doing. And here they do it better than in, um, on my replica, but again, they do it better than they did just stay out. But that joke isn't getting old. <laughs> but, um, but he kind of feels worse than doing good in the cup code compared to other so. Where that and on its own in a bubble, it's entertaining and I can't get a like of a joke what they do is that when Perry appears in the outfit and we're talking, come on, it's really starting to get kind of desperate. I don't know, maybe it's just on, a, on an entertainment level, it's fun to see the stuff again and to, you know, that's cool, but it's just on an artistic level. But good news is the main plot's pretty good. But damn, yeah, there was some good joke. I like the joke about old timey texting <laughs> and how Merck and Grammar came with that. And this is fun joke with Victor Lee and Young Gale's always fun. Uh, when he gets to, especially if he's only go, like, much like in that episode, we have a good clock recording. Um, <laughs> um, you know, and he had gotten that comment to him, without, well, but to it, was then trying to get the clock. How about the joke where they question how the clock named Becky? You know, a lot of that bus stop, bus stop is named Steve. <laughs> bus stop Steve, my favorite character, along with Farmy Jungle Bob. 
，嗯，我买就是讲专门讲个宝贝，对我给牛肉片里我跟侬话，嗯，呵呵，啊，反正嗯，啊哈，我做个 grab， 嗯。Now I'm I now want to make an account for both that. <laughs> I might just do that. Uh, go by time if you go got that part of me up. But um, yeah, go with me. Part it's got it's like it's start off quite nice. Yeah, we establishing what we're doing and a good joke, a nice moment. Then Perry showing up, and I'm like, no, you're starting off so well. But yeah, the ticking clock. I enjoyed it. The main part was pretty fun. You know, nice sequel. Um, and even had a free element to it. With cut plot, it got least entertaining, and at least fixed my problem with the day out and had a fine ending. You know, artistically, man, am I getting sick of what I'm doing. Like, maybe should take them out way for the episode with that small cameo, because I didn't do this. We're going to go through after the day out, you know? But, oh well, what are you going to do? The main plot was pretty good anyway. So very bad. Anyway, I'll park and here I can get for managing Murphy and Law. Okay, I am back for managing Murphy and Law. Think of a quick if they gone from finishing up to recording the thing. So anyway, managing Murphy and Law written by Joshua Puet. So the main part supposedly that basically the they got that manager thing started and uh they have become their manager. Um, and going to help them out through the show. They are doing a, a thing. Uh, the game the alpaca thing. Forget long with game the alpaca. And they have that going on. But the real plot concerns Kanish and Dakota who Binky go over to Clushy Dog and a burger. Um, and basically, every time they drive through, the device hits them, which causes them to. Not only talk them to do a bunch of weird stuff, but I'll go forget about it. Binky hang up with I don't Binky call the blackout, do crazy things, and forget it ever happened. And now I have to figure out exactly what if we did and what and how, what exactly is causing this. Um, but we, you know, we can uh, never break the bike for me or something like that. So, uh, so weird. Um, well, one heck, very little to do with managing with Pink Law. But that point get concluded. There's some fun stuff. There's a pretty catchy song that we bought with it. Um, and there's a cute Amanda Byron one at the end. Um, I hear Kate Blosion not go very uh, much about that. Didn't want, can't watch that one until Lady Girl on computer, so I can't comment on that. But, you know, that sounds cool. Um, and I do like how it's not about the relationship at all. It's really about her just managing alone and getting some good joke out of it. And she doesn't prove to be a decent manager, so, which, which is good on fear. I don't know, but she still managed her at the end, so nothing too bad happened. And they didn't even rent the relationship until the end, so but they can go good. She had more of her character, the guy, the element that she showcased at the start. Oh, but it really is primarily the current calendar show. And Jeremy! Yeah! Uh, no doof cameo, thank the lord, because it's the Jeremy cameo, which I think they handled well, because we don't see him. Um, we hear Voink on the speaker. Um, at the beginning, they mentioned how they were told to talk to Jeremy Duncan, but we never find out exactly why, unless we're tied into the memory thing. Um, but, I don't know. But that part I forgot about. But, again, you could have swapped out that voice on the box with anyone. Um, and hell, you could not know who Jeremy is, because let's pretend that no, we are thinking for a reference to what happened, and it's just like one. If you don't remember Jeremy I mean, and then for arguably just as well, go so it's not totally dependent. It could Jeremy cameo, but it felt it feels natural. You know, though it could have been anyone else, I don't think getting nearly distracting it would do cameo then. And they took a good gag about frustrated again. Again, Jeremy's not the character who would yell a lot. They go kind of novelty to hear him yell break his voice. So that's fun. Um Brown's playing on a taking cameo or confident uh but, okay, uh, their problem was quite very entertaining, uh, because the American race and do a crazy thing for a lot of good jokes. It's funny. Crazy thing they get out of it. And it's just a really crazy episode. <laughs> and then there's the pop of the aliens, um, who are keeping, who, he, the Murphy God going around, and they get involved in all that. 
we, we saw um, the aliens get back in the way out. You know, you know, and how they're trying to warn people of this danger. And I don't know if I got to the aliens, but um, the aliens are. Uh, but there's a small cliffhanger that involved them. Like, uh, the alien is our plot for the King and stuff like the Kong Cavendish and Kingdom 1. So, that's interesting. This is a really interesting episode. The main plot is pretty typical stuff, but you get a cute um, at a moment. And the plot feature took a lot of crazy, um, the Kong Cavendish stuff. That's pretty entertaining. But, yeah, I guess I quite enjoy the one. I just don't. I just find it weird that it could call managing brushing all and and it really a cup plot. They could have called it Nita after something with the cone cabinet. <laughs> you know. And they've done that before. There was the rake, there was percent flea block. Um think about the game a little bit, but go get gambler to them now or what the focus could. Uh, but yeah, quote, weird as a point, it pretty entertaining. I actually don't have too many issues with it. It was just crazy and fun and entertaining. Um, and Journey Cameo, again, don't do the Cameo, thank you. Yeah, for Journey Cameo, I got to get, but they still could have fit in a Doom Patrol computer. But, mm, I'm glad they didn't. Make it seem like I hate Doof, but it's like, so much of them. I hope in that pairing he's not in it, or he's not in it much. So yeah, that's the pairing. Predominantly some fun stuff, just. A little too much to do from one episode. And I think we get Jeremy. I just, you know. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, that's all I got. Um, one episode was quite entertaining in flight of, you know, weird sort of doof plot. I think it was quite easy there. And an episode was pretty entertaining, even though the focus was a bit odd, like, getting to come up or a replicate. But yeah, I quite enjoyed the pairing, and I got you for that one, whatever it ended up being. So, Wait, anything else to mention? Yeah, that was important if I forgot to mention it. Do a joke or anything. Um, go ahead. Uh, I think I got. Bye.